Hello and welcome to TBD, tonight's big discussion. It's great to have you all here. It's great to be here. Today we'll be talking about Judaism and comparing and addressing the history of Jewish people in two big countries, the United States and Poland. The Jewish diaspora has had a huge effect on how Jewish culture has developed in different parts of the world. Yes, we will be talking about the whole Jewish diaspora itself. A diaspora is the dispersion of any people from their original homeland. The Jewish diaspora is a huge topic. It's how the Jews were moved out of their homeland and their religion was spread around the world. Some people think the Jewish diaspora is over, but it's still going on, and it will last as long as Judaism survives. The Jewish diaspora began when the Jews were exiled from the Kingdom of Israel for the first time in 733 BCE by Assyria. This began the constant spread of Jews around the world in exile from their homeland of Israel. Due to this diaspora, different cultures and traditions have developed among Jewish people who dispersed to different parts of the world. Today we'll be comparing Jewish life in two places of the world, Poland and the United States, and compare how the Jewish culture is different in those places. Sounds great, let's get started. I'm going to hand you over to Jack Acampo, our expert on population. Before the great immigration of Jews to the U.S. at the beginning of the 1900s, there were only about 50,000 Jews living in the U.S. However, afterwards, there were almost 2 million. The Jewish population in the U.S. went up from not even 1% to about 3% of the U.S. total population in about 24 years. In Poland, just before the 20th century, there were about 1.3 million Jews living there. As of 1921, just after World War I, and Poland became a sovereign state, there were about 3 million Jews living in Poland. So what exactly caused a large Jewish immigration to the United States during the early 1900s? Here's our expert on American life, Jose Martinez. In the early 1900s, Jewish American life had become more and more prominent on the East Coast. But why such a sudden increase in immigration? Let's start with looking at the 1900s. First of all, the average American income was $438 a year, attracting many people in general to the United States. Secondly, with only 76 million people living in the United States, there were plenty of opportunities and space for people to live. In addition, at the time, the United States was experiencing somewhat of an industrial revolution with more and more factories and other easy labor opportunities that attracted many people. This was a huge appeal to all people, but now on, specifically on Jewish life is Joey Nadler. Jewish life in the United States was increasing, especially in one of the biggest cities in the country, New York. When Jews immigrated into the country, they had to pass through Ellis Island, located in the New York Harbor. So many of the Jews who passed through Ellis Island chose to stay close and start a Jewish community in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. This part of New York in the early 1900s was becoming more and more influenced by Jewish Americans, so much that there were now Yiddish newspapers and theaters. But with more influence came more popularity, and with more popularity, that area became more crowded. At one point, there were nearly 56,000 Jews living on one block. The Industrial Revolution, although offering, me offering jobs, paid in relatively low wages and created poor working conditions. One of the biggest examples of this was when the Triangle Shirtwaist Company in New York caught fire in 1911 and 146 workers died, many of them Jewish women. On a positive note, Jews came from all across Europe, where different backgrounds and traditions have been established because of the Jewish diaspora, were all coming together resulting in a mix of culture. Sephardic Jews from Spain and Portugal began to mix cultures with Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe countries like Germany and Poland here in the United States. Life was sort of tough for Jews in America, but it was a lot easier than it was for Jews in Poland, part of the reason many of them immigrated to the United States. To speak about that is Nicholas Garrido. On the topic of Jews in Poland, during the early 1900s, 7.7 .7 million Jews lived in Europe. Poland had the largest population of Jews in the world. It was the cultural center for all Jews in Europe. The reason Poland was able to house so many Jews was because in Poland, unlike other European countries, the Jews were not discriminated. Many Jews in Poland were unemployed and lived in crowded buildings. The housing situation started to get worse when the German reformed Jews started to live in Poland. The buildings were, poor, were in poor shape and it was difficult to make it in Poland. Before the First World War, about 250,000 Jews immigrated to America from Poland hoping for a better life. The ones who stayed in Poland stayed because they were afraid of losing their heritage and culture. After some of the Jews left for America, the reformed German Jews started to pour in from Germany, which created more unemployed Jews in Poland. Unemployment, poverty, and anti-Semitism were just some of the reasons Jews began leaving Poland not to mention the violence that was brewing with World War I soon to come. Jews in Poland had a harder life than Jews in the United States, but both had to suffer through hard Now Jose Martinez will explain the similarities and differences between how the American Jews and Polish Jews were treated. 
As explained previously, the Jews traveled both to the U.S. and to Poland to be able to practice their religion during the Jewish diaspora because these were <coughs> two of the few places that accepted them. However, the treatment began becoming worse after the 1900s. The American Jews had it better than the Jews in Poland for that period of time, maybe even better than most of Europe for that matter. Jews in Europe were forced into labor work and caused riots. Meanwhile, the Jews that managed to immigrate to America were shaping future Jewish life for the U.S. The life in the U.S. wasn't as great as it used to be in Poland, but it was still better than the harsh treatment of the Polish Jews, and they were getting a new start in life. When it comes to culture, Jewish culture in both the U.S. and Poland had some similarities, only because the American Jews were made up of Jews from around the world, including from Poland, who brought the cultures overseas. But in the United States, other parts of Jewish life also influenced the Jewish culture. In the start of the Jewish diaspora, Jews dispersed places they would be accepted. This trend continued and Jews ended up in the United States and Poland. The culture in those places is both at the same time similar and different. It's amazing how the Jewish culture still survives. To end our show, we would like to make clear just exactly how Jewish culture is different in different parts of the world due to the Jewish diaspora. It's an interesting thought. With all this exile and dispersion and whatnot, how do the Jewish people manage to keep the same core values around the world? Over time, the religion and how it is followed became different in different parts of the world. In Poland, the Jewish people became known as the Ashkenazi Jews, one of the two categories of Jews. The Ashkenazi Jews are more of a stereotypical Jew, in the sense that it is what non-Jewish people picture when thinking of Judaism in a general sense. For example, big traditional synagogues, the traditional foods, matzo ball soup, lakas, and the origins of Orthodox Jews, the man with the long beard and black hat, the image of the stereotypical Jew. But the other kind of Jewish people are the Sephardic Jews. These are the less traditional Jews. How they dress is completely different from the stereotypical Jewish person would look. The food is different because in different parts of the world they have different foods to cook with. An example is that for Hanukkah they eat jelly donuts instead of latkes. It is simply a completely different way of celebrating the same things. Finally, the United States Jewish population is a, mix, is a mix of Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews, creating a whole new culture which can be considered the modern Jew. I think it's pretty fair to say that Jewish diaspora affected aspect of Jewish culture in different parts of the world. Well, that's all for tonight on the TBD Show. Thanks for listening.